Welcome back to Be Varsity Live. Zach Ewing, Trevor Horn with you in the TBC Media Studio. And um, we enjoyed our visits with the All-Star Bowl All-Stars players. Uh, the last couple of segments, we had Navante Demison, Stephen Marsh, Jeremiah Foster, uh, all at some point in their past, BHS drillers now uh, playing for the Gold Squad and from the Black Squad. Oh, we also had Michael Giorgino from the Gold Squad in the second segment, along with opponents from the Black Squad, Elisha Ortiz, Scott Bonham, and Michael Barnett. You know what's funny is this is now finishing up my third year here at Beaver City, mm -hmm. and you know every year I'm like, oh, there's great kids here at Kern County, and then there's always like, are we going to have a group like that again? And every year, somebody always steps up. A group always steps up as great kids, and it's a lot of fun to be around here. And, you know, that was those two segments were a testament to those kids at Kern County that really are great young adults to be around. And as we talk about the end of the school year, a lot coming up, which we will get to here in the last couple of segments. I think we got three shows left after today. Mm -hmm. No, maybe we got four left. We have May the 18th, 25th, and then also June the 1st, which would be our state track Blowout, and then we'll wrap things up on June the eighth with our last show. We're of the gonna, year. yeah, we are. Well, uh, of okay, course, we didn't gonna, do it last. We're year. gonna rock okay. on, man. June right. June the eighth will be our last show of the school year, oh. and then we will uh, we'll take a little bit of a summer break and be back full bore on mostly mostly on football in August, and then get into the rest of the fall sports as we go. But for now, we want to welcome in to talk uh, what's going to wrap up in the spring here. Nick Papagni, the Pagmeter dot com, uh, from the Fresno area, and uh, he is. You know, I think with the retirement of Andy Bogart, Nick, you, you have become sort of the the, uh, the dean now of, of uh, Fresno County Prep Sports. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so sad that Fresno just crumble. Yeah, we can't. We're, we're having a little trouble. Years over. There we go. Oh, there we go. At, at first, I'm sorry, Nick. Start over there because we we had a you you blew out right when you first started talking there. No, I, I said, uh, can you imagine the Fresno be crumbling before the year's even over? I would have thought at least. Go until the end of baseball and softball track season, and then call it a day. But amazing, they did it now. Yeah, it is. It is amazing. We talked about that a little bit on your show last week, and it's it's just sad to see. But we're going to keep rolling down here, and I know you will up there. And it's uh, it is the time of year that we love. Uh, really, there are three of them: fall sports, winter sports, and now the spring sports postseason. We've got tennis and golf and track and field all in the postseason, and swimming, swimming, and and then right. baseball and softball soon to join them. And that's kind of what we want to talk about this. Playoff brackets coming out for baseball and softball um, Saturday on afternoon. Saturday in Porterville. And really, this week was very eventful on the baseball diamond. Uh, first of all, you broke the news, Nick, that, that uh, Jay Pruce of Kerman, who's had a tremendous amount of success with the Lions, he has uh, announced plans to retire at the end of, this, of, of uh, this season, right? Yes, he has. And I think he's got a couple young kids who live in the Clovis area, and he's traveling all over the place. I think it was just getting too much for him. I think he maybe takes a year off and he's back at it somewhere. Somewhere. And if he lives in the Clovis area, boy, yeah. there are probably schools in that area that would like to have him if they have an opening. Well, and before we get into playoff stuff, I mean, another big one that you broke, Nick, was uh, your buddy, Matt Johnson, leaving Edison as a football coach to head to Madera South. That's a shocker for us down here. Obviously, Matt is probably one of your closest friends. How did that all kind of go down for him? Yeah, I was right in the middle of that whole negotiation. You know, I just – uh, I'm good friends with the Madera uh, athletic director, Marty, out there, and I just felt like they're hungry. Edison administration's not hungry, and they made him an offer he could not refuse. It was just a tremendous offer. Ground up, they're going to have a beautiful stadium before too long, field turf, the whole nine yards. And Ed, and he doesn't even have an office, because that's number one. It drives me nuts. That guy doesn't have an offense. The CEO of a football team at Edison, no offense, no athletic PE. So he's trying to compete against the Bakersfields of the world, and he's with one hand tied behind his back, and it's awfully difficult. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those situations where, boy, you think Edison, they've got all the resources in the world as far as players and talent, and then that's, that's not really the whole picture as a head coach. So look out for Madera South. You know, maybe not this year, but in the years to come, I think that, that will be a program on the rise yeah. in football. So, uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think we'll see. Yeah, it, and that's, it'll be interesting because they're in the same league, so Madera South and Edison are going to play each other every year too. Yep. Yeah. Let's move into yeah, – uh, let's, let's talk softball first, Nick, as the, uh, the regular season wraps up today and tomorrow across the Valley, and then we get into the playoffs next week. Uh, softball's Tuesday – Tuesday, Thursday next week, right, with the playoffs, and then baseball will be Wednesday and Friday. Uh, the Stockdale Mustangs keep rolling now 27-1 and 14-0 and in the SWYL, and 
uh, as you've said a couple of times on the show, there's a lot of competition out there, whether it's Clovis or Central or Hanford Buchanan West. or Hanford West. But uh, at this point, Stockdale, a clear um, somebody's going to have to knock them off to be the champ, I think. No question. They're easily the number one. Right now I've got Clovis Cougars at number two. They're the – they're well, they're tied with Central in the, in the track, but then Hanford West. But I look at head-to-head, Clovis beat Hanford West. So I have that number two. And then Central at four, and then Buchanan at five, and, and you can't leave out the Bullard Knights at six. So, I'm I'm telling you, Division One, it could be some upsets. You got Clovis East who can swing the bats. Liberty's hanging around. Clovis North can beat teams, even though they're the youngest team in the valley. But I I still think Stockdale, Clovis will be one and two. And that uh, that would be a great matchup if that happened. Of course, it's not easy to get there. And those finals are Friday and Saturday. May the 26th and 27th at Fresno State, at Bulldog Diamond. Um, going into some of the lower divisions, what division would you say is, is the most intriguing to you outside of Division One? Probably, I'm guessing, Division Three Because I think Hanford is the defending champs, but they're playing an awfully tough schedule. I still have them at number one, but they got their hands full. I mean, there's some teams behind them, and you know as well as I do who they are. But I think they got their hands full. I think Division Three is going to be very interesting. Well, I'll tell you this right now. I saw Taft beat Wasco and kind of handed Wasco, handed it to Wasco when I saw him. And it might have been an off day for Samantha Martinez in the circle. But, you know, Taft has gotten a freshman now in Reagan Hamilton that, you know, when you do a double take, you think it's Caitlin Emerson again because she wears the same number. She's tall like Caitlin was at about six foot. She plays the same position. And she hit two out of the yard, including a grand slam in the first inning. And then they've got two pitchers on there, and they're the fifth seed right now. And I think things are just starting to kind of round into form in Division Three for them. And then obviously Independence attached me. So there is a strong Kern County presence in Division Three in the softball you know, bracket this year. Yeah, you're right. And I think Dinuba's kind of maybe the sleeper. I don't know how good Reedley is. They're, they're dominating the NYL around here. Liberty Madera Ranchos played a D1 schedule. So it, Div- Division Three is going to be very interesting. The very even teams. But as it is in most sports, I mean, I just everything pales in comparison to D1 usually. And you, I mean, I just look at a team like, uh, you know, Liberty's got Kylie Fahey out there who could beat any team on a given day. Clovis North, I know, beat Central a couple of – last week and so I, I mean look these are teams that are going to be seated seventh eighth ninth in division one and they they have the capability of popping up and beating a Stockdale or a Clovis or a Central and so that D1 bracket almost from the word go is just just going to be great yeah you're absolutely right and I, I see the teams who dominate with pitching that's the that's the key because if they dominate pitching and you can hit these girls the defense is shaky they're not used to making some plays and so I've seen it already where they're not, you. hey, they're hitting us. They haven't hit Gianna Mancha from Central all year. You can put the bat on the ball. Central's shaky on defense. Well, and see, Same that's with a, some of the other teams. And that's the thing that kind of, I think, sets Stockdale apart from the rest of the teams is that Sydney Hornbuckle is a great pitcher, but she is not a flamethrower. So her defense is stellar behind her, and I think that's going to be the biggest thing is that teams are going to hit her, but the defense is going to back her up because they're so strong in the infield and in the outfield and a catcher. Let's switch gears to baseball, Nick. Uh, just a few more minutes in this segment left. And, and uh, it's been a pretty big week because both Clovis and Buchanan, who were for a large part of the year the top two teams in reverse order, Buchanan won Clovis too, they both lost on Tuesday. And so they both have another game to go tomorrow. Stockdale keeps rolling down here. Obviously the schedule, the league schedule, not as tough as it is in the track. Uh, but where do you see, as of this moment, the seating shaking out in Division One baseball? Well, it's, it's a big factor. If, if Buchanan wins tomorrow, I think they're the number one seed slam dunk. Stockdale will be the two seed. If Buchanan loses tomorrow, that means Clovis North sweeps them. Stockdale could slither right in there. Now, Clovis and Buchanan have played a much tougher schedule if you look at the schedule. Mm-hmm. There's no question about it, but you cannot turn away what Stockdale has done. I think the worst-case scenario, Stockton is a, a two-seed. I would say Clovis would be a three-seed, and the two hottest teams around here right now are Clovis North at four and Clovis West at five. Nobody wants to face Nick Falco or Clovis West right now. He shut out the uh, Buchanan Bears uh, two weeks ago, and he is just throwing darts right now. And, and you could argue, I mean, it, because the, the section finals in baseball are at a neutral site at, at – uh, Rawhide Ballpark in Visalia, also May 26th and 27th. Whether you're the one or the two doesn't really matter, except for who you might play. 
Uh, but if you look at those semifinal matchups, and you're arguing the four and the five seed, which could be Clovis North and Clovis West, are much hotter than, say, the three seed Clovis. And then I, I'm guessing the six seed might be Tulare Western, and, uh, you know, a team that's kind of very good, but unproven. And maybe the two seed actually might have an easier road to the final if that's the way the bracket shakes out. Yeah, and the reason why I say Clovis is ahead, because I go to head to head. Clovis beat Clovis North two out of three. Clovis North beat Clovis West two out of three. So you do, it's a trickle down effect. And you're right, Tulare Western is a team. They got their ace back, Elijah Park. He's back throwing. They could be a sleeper in there. They haven't played anybody since the Coca Cola Classic because they play in the EYL and it's not going to be a challenge. But they could be a team. And Bullard's playing in the CMAC. They're, they're rolling along. I don't know if they have the, the teams to play, but. Boy, I think there could be some upset in that first round. Liberty's got Easton McMurray back on the mound after being gone for a month. Uh, as of last night, Tony Mills said he's not sure. He, he came okay. back, didn't like the way he looked. Okay, so he didn't so like him on, on yeah, last that's week because he still did up throw in the five air. innings. Yeah. Okay. Carson Bryant's a good pitcher. But here's one thing, guys, that I, I, I look at that I see an issue with in Division One, like we do with football and basketball is that coaches' r- r- polls – are taken into strong consideration on Saturday. And how much is that is is going to be in effect, Nick, when it's the track versus the SWIL when it comes to coaches' polls? I, I don't like it because you're right. We, we've got way more votes around here. And you've seen it before where I, I've had some uh, SWIL teams way above and all of a sudden the coaches' poll comes out and they're way down. I, I, I don't know what they're going to do with Stockdale because no one's seen Stockdale in this area. But they, if they look at a 24-3 and three record, they got to say, wow, this team's a real deal. They, to me, it's got to be the track champ versus the South w, uh, SWYL champ one and two. So because Clovis West, Clovis North, and Clovis have not proved that they're the two seed. There's a, you, can't, you, know, you can't take a three or four loss team in, the, in their own division and put them into the two seed. There's no way. Yeah, especially you know, if Stockdale dropped a couple of games, that would be one thing. But... They haven't. They've they've really taken other than one loss to Liberty. They have not lost to anybody in the section, and so yeah, the no, only two losses were yeah. at the Boris Classic. The schedule is not uh, as good as it is for Clovis and Buchanan, but it's very difficult to see them getting anything other than a, a one or a two, and probably a two. And Clovis, I mean, I, I said Clovis is maybe not as not as hot right now, but when you got James Patrick coaching, that is not a team you want to play <laughs> in May. So don't don't count them out. Uh, same question I asked for softball, Nick. Before we let you go in baseball, what what other division besides D one are you, are you kind of having an eye on and really rubbing your hands looking forward to again i gotta go with d3 in baseball that is the most even nobody wants it really uh some i thought you know they're going for the triple crown you know they won the, the section in football they won it in base in basketball and they're going for for baseball but i don't know i mean there's i don't know i think division three is the team and, and division four would be the maybe the best because you've got fowler wasco emmanuel and uh, Fireball. Uh, uh, Fireball, those top four teams, that's going to be a tremendous race. So Division Four is going to be fun as well. Division Two, I think Redwood can uh, out-hit anybody. I think they're the favorites to win the triple, I mean, back-to-back-to-back. So I think Redwood's the favorite there. And you've got Redwood number four overall in the section, so that shows how strong you think they are. Uh, Nick, we appreciate you joining us. We're going to let you go so we can get on with the rest of our show. But uh, – uh, thanks for dropping some more knowledge on us, and, and we'll talk to you once the brackets are out. You got it, boys. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Always appreciate you, bud. That's Nick Papagni of thepagmeter.com. Check him out there also on 940 ESPN Radio in Fresno. We're going to be back. we got a couple other things to talk about. It's an area track recap from last last night. We had a section record go down among a couple of other notable things going on at Liberty last night. And we'll also talk about what's going on in tennis today and in the golf and swimming world coming up as well. Right here on B-Varsity Live, we'll wrap it up after this. 